arrived here, remember our entire solar system was in a state of magnetic upheaval. Um, so they, there was a long waiting period just for things to calm down. I mean, you don't drive your car willingly through an earthquake, do you? So these characters didn't want to just fly their spaceships back out of the Earth sure. immediately because, you know, and they didn't know where they were. The Schumann waves, the uh, Hartman waves, the ultraviolet light, the size of the planet, all of the above was probably not what they liked or what was good for them. You're saying they came here accidentally? They came here per purely accidentally, and they did not, they've never liked it here. They don't like it here. They've never liked it here. And uh, we're living in the times where they're actually going to be trying to get off. But uh, Are they still here? Well, the descendants are, yeah. Oh, now that's fascinating. This is, what we go, this is the heart of the book. is what Because I am not a person that is, I am, of course, as you can obviously tell, fascinated by ancient history, but my book is not necessarily a treatise on ancient history. I am, as a person, very concerned with our times now, what is going on in our world right now, and I believe, like my mentor Jordan Maxwell has said so many times, that if you want to understand the times that we're living in, or you want to understand the times to come, it is imperative that we understand the foundations, the origins of where we have come from. The 21st century is that time. In the very, very first lines of the book, with your permission, I'd just like to read that. Please. Lines. It says here in the preface of Atlantis that during the next 10 years, the human race is destined to finally discover the facts about its true origins and destiny. As part of this discovery, we have to address the overwhelmingly important question of how the phenomenon of evil came into the world and into the consciousness of Earth's human inhabitants. This is a question that should have been, should be on the mind of every living man and woman. It has been with us for millennia, and it will be with the children of the future if we do not come upon an answer now. We have left the question of evil in the hands of the theologians and the scientists for too long. This was surely a mistake, for as the casualty statistics clearly testify, the institutions of religion and science have been the worst purveyors of evil that this planet has ever had to endure. After centuries of prevarication and criminality, we can no longer afford to look to these edifices to fulfill, to answer the all-important conundrum of evil. What we're talking about here, George, is that we have to look to the past in order to understand where we are now because we are in an end-game DEFCON 1 situation. These beings came here... We're talking about 30,000 years ago. You know as well as I do that that's a blink in history. That sure. is a, that's yesterday. So they have tampered with our DNA. They have created a being. They have either intentionally or non-intentionally, we have now as a result of their hybridization program. So you and Sitchin agree on that part? Oh, yes. And okay. many other scholars do. Uh, the, years before Zachary Sitchkin and I were ever born, people have been writing about this. It's, in, it's part of the occult tradition. It's part of the magical tradition. It's in the Bible. It's in uh, the Book of Enoch. It's in the Fist of Sophia. It's in every scripture. And I've read them all. Every country's holy books or every country's holy scriptures that they consider sacred. I have looked into them, and they're all the same refrain. That we've been genetically altered. Absolutely. And, of course, that is the only the text that still survived because we also know in the research community that there has been an overt plan to destroy this uh, knowledge. Uh, I go into that in the book as well about the different attempts to sequester and get rid of this information. But somebody's in the know, and we're not going to understand the times that we live in and all of its strangeness and all of its uh, permutations, both militaristically, sociologically, economically, psychologically, which is the thing that really fascinates me. We're not going to understand any of this unless we address this question of evil. Uh, in my mind, coming from a philosophical background, I can't imagine that we've ever had any other question of more importance. Is it not important for us to find out why we do the things that we do, not only to this planet, but to each other? Well, can't you say the devil made me do it? Well, I would be wondering to where that image of the devil comes from. I'm, of course, I've looked into that. Re religion is a very important, like it says in the preface I just read, we have looked, you know, historically, when we want answers to the question of good and evil, we have turned to the religious representatives. But unfortunately, you see, maybe it's my Irish or something, but I think it's time to give them the bloody pink slip because they haven't done a very good job of explaining it. And in fact, in their job to solve the problem, have they not committed infinite more, you know, acts of terror and criminality and, and psychological abuse to us? They've contorted the original Sumerian-Egyptian story of the, of the book of um, Genesis in order to de denigrate the female. This is what my book also goes into, is about the question of why is it that there's been this campaign of mass murder and marginalization of the female? We've got questions there. They're not going to be answered. This is a subtext 
uh, sub-theme to the whole question of the coming of evil and the rising of the great post-historical empires in which were based on patriarchal patterns and which were based on hierarchy and uh, based on conquest, you see. These, this is the legacy we have inherited from only 11,000 years ago, but at the roots of our historical era are to be found in the pre-Diluvian era. And that is why scholars from the Royal Academy and the Royal Societies did not want us to look back, you know, that far. And they just said, oh, that's all fairy folk tale, and we don't want to look at that, and we've had big ice ages. What are you talking about? We've had a two million mm -hmm. year Pleistocene epoch, which now we find out through the work of Michael Cremo and others didn't even exist. You know, they would do anything for us to look back. But as I say in my book, the 21st century is the time for solutions. It is the time for us as the human race to put aside a lot of our, you know, partisan agendas and start looking at who we are because we are doing credible injustice not only to the animals and to the earth, but to each other. And it's, it's building up all the time. It's not just the time. It's not just the criminality that's happening socially and politically. It's the day-to-day -day soft evil that we all commit inside ourselves. Do we want to be lumbered with that? Do we want to be lumbered uh, with that and say that nature is responsible? Well, are you saying that these people, the Atlanteans, that they were evil from the get-go? I would use that word, and I use it very... Uh, yes, I use that word because I have looked into history and I've seen what has come of their tampering. You see, as I said before, other beings, you know, I don't want to be Gene Roddenberry here, but obviously there is a um, a directive, right, a prime directive in which we, if we have space travel, we go, we research, and we leave. Most of the visitors here have done that. The Nephilim, the fallen angels, these sons of the, the uh, serpent people that uh, William Bramley gives mm -hmm. the term the serpent people, they chose not to do that. And if you read the Book of Enoch, it tells you that they were even... Concerned about okay, that. Well, you're not saying the Atlanteans you said they'll look like us. So the, we're not talking about reptilians here. Oh, right? no. We can get to that later. That's another big bone of contention okay. I have with some of the scholars out there. All right. They, these individuals were actually frightened. The leader of the Nephilim knew that they were doing a forbidden thing. I don't have it, but there's, it's in the book. There's a, a passage quoting verbatim from the leader of the Nephilim saying that he is doing an unholy thing and that time and history may never forgive him. And he actually asks his colleagues, can they go ahead with it? Now, biblical researchers have always put that down to the physical mating with the women. Right. That is not what they are talking what about. What do you think it is? They are talking about something much more scientific and much more in-depth. They are talking about the actual interference with the DNA of the human race that they have now visited their with, visitors. Which still could be going on based on some people's uh, abduction testimonies. If you, and if you, re if you research, uh, listen to Dr. Roger Lear's uh, stuff about the implants, mm -hmm. if you talk to uh, Dr. Jacobs, you know, I mean, yes, we are aware that this is going on. There's something still happening on our planet. Uh, Peter Davenport, I'm sure you know, sure. Not has been quite looking, well. looking into this. Yes, we're all looking into this question. And, uh, you know, again, I tend to want to know that the, I'm convinced that the answers to all of what is happening now lie in the records of the past. However, I must restate again, my motive for doing this is not because I got nothing better to do. I am fascinated with what's happening in our times. I'm fascinated about where we, the human race, are going. And we need to be aware that the roots of our modern age right now are, you know, in the, in the distant uh, ages of the past. Did, the, did they have nuclear capabilities in those days? Yes, in fact, that's a good point. I was just uh, looking through the book. And you know that, um, remember I told you that part of my ancestry is uh, from India? Yes. The um, head of Sanskrit the, uh, at the University of Madras, who was one of the people who had the, 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 the incredible job, let's say, of transcribing all those ancient you know, uh, Sanskrit texts. Um, his name is Dr. Raj Havan. Okay, this is what he has to say about your question. He says, 50 years, he says, of researching this ancient works convinces me that there are living beings on other planets, and that they visited the Earth as far back as 4,000 years B.C. There is just a mass of fascinating information about flying machines, even fantastic science fiction weapons, that can be found in the translations of the Vedas, the Indian epics, and the other Sanskrit texts. And we know that the Vedas are very famous. We still have them, right? Yeah, well, that's what I hear. Did you know that the Scandinavian Edda, that's the holy books of the Scandinavians, right? It's called the Edda. It's the same word as the Veda, and the story is the same. It's just the V's taken out, huh? The V is pronunciation, yeah, for pronunciation purposes. They're the holy books, and they actually have the same dramatis personae 
and the same events taking place in both those All countries. right, well, it sounds like somebody pushed the nuclear button in those days, Michael. Stay with us. We'll chat with you more about that when we come right back on Coast to Coast AM. I'm George. Well, Michael, I... okay, now, you've got to explain to me what you think Atlantis looked like during this period 30-some thousand years ago. That is one of the most fascinating um, subjects. The Germanic people used to call it Ultima Thule, right? Ultima Thule or mm -hmm. Ultima Thule, meaning extreme north. They also positioned it up there. The Celtic people used to call it Hyperborea, and they definitely speak about it being temperate. You know, in the old Superman movies, when you see, uh, super, and I look, look what we're looking at here in these Superman movies, a being, right, from another planet yeah. with superhuman strength. Yeah. When he goes to his particular... Uh, Place, his yeah. refuge, his, uh, his ice crystal palace, I guess. Precisely. His, his particular little oracle, his enclave, which is a supercomputer, is it not? He uh -huh. goes where? He goes into the north. Now, granted, it has ice in it now, but you see, that is another subliminal message there about something that somebody knows about the old mythologies of the northern climes which were very temperate. You see, before the pole shift, which again was precipitated by the, the alien uh, presence on our planet, but before the pole shift, we had a uh, straight axis. It was what the um, geo uh, people, the geospherical people call um, tholioform, in which the axis of the Earth is perfectly straight. That gives us a very temperate climate, especially in the northern climes. And that is what all the ancient books talk about, about the Blessed Isles, you know, the Fortunate Isles. Sure. The fact that it was very lush and temperate. And, of course, if you're visiting here and you have your pick of where to go and you have spacecrafts that can basically comb the whole of the planet, then, you know, you have, they probably had good reason for, for setting You up go there. to the nice spot. Why not? You know, I would. Now, in terms of uh, buildings and, and things, they come here... How do they start construction, con constructing all this? Okay, that is another key. I have a whole chapter on that one. That is uh, very important because, of course, they were limited in their number, and just like the travelers who are lost in space, literally lost in space, they probably came here in such a hurry, they had to immediately start calibrating where they were, what part of the galactic wing, you know, because their intention was to leave. Were they fleeing some other place? Yes, they were fleeing their home planet and, and hiding out for in, in case they were going to be uh, attacked or destroyed. Why were they fleeing? That I don't know. I'm still looking into that. Um, I have some theories that, you know, uh, why the original, why this all happened on their planet. And, and obviously they weren't their entire planet. Maybe they were chased off their own planet. I believe that. I believe that's clearly mentioned that they were coming here in a hurry. They were being pursued. And then because they didn't know where they were, they started to build what we know today to be the great uh, megalith. Well, well, it's kind of funny. Like you mentioned Superman, they could very well have been like those villains that were chased off their own planet. I believe it. And in fact, if you even watch the movie Planet of the Apes, if you know what you're looking at in that movie, they're describing Atlantis. You asked about the layer of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. I'd say go and even rent that fantastic film. And they're giving you some indication of how Atlantis was laid out so that it would be very easy to, in fact, sequester or corral the indigenous Earth people, you know, the groups that they would bring there. Because they wanted to experiment on them. And before you can do that, you have to set up profiling. You have to diagnose. You've got to take research, you know, and you have to do that benignly. Sitchin writes that we humans were used as labor, almost slave labor. Is that the case there? Oh, yes. There's no question in my mind about that. The Bible very much talks about that. The uh, Popol Vuh, for instance, is, uh, states that as well. And they were able to corral us there and take profiles of, of our DNA because they were so so advanced that even Gene Roddenberry would have difficulty in, in, in conceiving of the scientific advancement of these beings. And this is uh, where basically the big problem took place for us. We are now inheriting the schism, the psychic, physiological, genetic, and psychological quandary, the schism, the schizophrenia, that that caused by them splicing their DNA with us it didn't work and it has created ah. this remarkable being the being that they created was a really remarkable entity let's make no mistake about that and I call that being Homo Atlantis and every single human being walking the planet is descended from that remarkable so being. that's what we are now yep. but, but you're saying it didn't work what do you mean by that it didn't uh, well it didn't work uh, because that we have inherited this proclivity for you know violence and for injustice okay it worked from their point of view originally because all they were doing was wanting slaves they wanted to you know be served yeah, pretty they, much in yeah, the old they, they wanted little workers everywhere. you got it that's a, it's the old john milton paradise lost better to you know reign in hell than serve in heaven uh you know philosophy and 
um, they wanted their hot coffee in the morning and you know and new 